got, we, we were talking now from the beginning of this podcast about the effect the restrictions are having on society, on people, mental health and so on. But for me now, as we speak now, I'm not talking eight months ago, now the governments are still extending the extraordinary powers, as they call it in Czech Republic, they call the extraordinary powers, so that they can make decisions as and when they please without even consulting parliament. And yet that is a great excuse to control their population. It's no longer about the virus, who I don't think it's ever been. It's about them having control. And every excuse about Big Brother is that, oh, coronavirus. We're doing this because of the coronavirus. When actually we're being monitored in every single thing we do and everywhere we go now. And this is where it's come, and this is where it gets interesting because I mean, if you actually look at the sort of conservative right wing ideology in some ways, mm -hmm. it's all about small government, getting people, living people, getting on with their lives. Allegedly. And allegedly, well, well, you say allegedly, but the thing is, there's no. There's, there, there seems to be it's become quite authoritarian, which is not mm. what, which is not what conservative, I suppose, capitalism was 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 about. It was all about people having free trade, being able to look after themselves, being self reliant, and basically they're tying people's hands behind their back. Um, and I suppose you can use the coronavirus as an excuse, but I'm not even sure the Conservative Party is a right wing party anymore. Um, even under Theresa May, it was it, it was it was it was showing well, sort of left wing. The Conservative Party tendencies. isn't leading. No, in fact, none of mm. the political parties yeah. are leading. It's all social media, um, and so what you have is is effectively rule of the rabble. And rule of the rabble is all about power, and power is authoritarianism. That's all that's happening. Well, if we look so, at the example with uh, with. Uh, your good wife and child coming back from, from Greece and look at me coming back from the Czech Republic. Let's not go through the how many uh, corona, uh, how many PCR tests you've got to do. I mean, I had to do five, which is ridiculous in itself. And then we just had an announcement three days ago that the government have hired Mighty, the big company, the facilities company Mighty, to increase the daily personal visits. So visits, knock, someone knocking on your door and checking up on you that you're a good boy staying at home. They're going to go from 1,000 a day to 10,000 a day. So we're supposed to be in a, in, in, a, in a pandemic where we shouldn't have social contact, where we should still be treated as adults. And I've had conversations with public health every single day of the week when I was in isolation uh, to a point I was saying, excuse me, can you stop reading from the script? This is getting ridiculous. I am an adult. I can go to the toilet by myself. Thank you very much. And now we're going to have more people being having a knock on the door saying, excuse me, are you who you say you are? Are you at home? Are you doing what you should be doing? I mean, really? You know, they've started. Honestly, uh, it's they, ridiculous. For day eight, they started asking for a video of you swabbing. Did you have it when you when you were doing no. it? No. Ah, right. OK, so they just brought that in. I so they, they want, may, maybe because they were taking our swabs in some cases, because that's what they thought of it all. Um, but uh, quite frankly, yes, they, they now demand a video swab. Um, that's ridiculous. And uh, you have to send that off. I'm, I'm, I, I even um, um, I had somebody from public health ask me, said, uh, can you, you have you got any feedback? Have you got any questions? And I said, uh, and I turned around and I said, yes, is there a reason why uh, you are calling me every single day of the week and repeating the same script? It, it, a, a spot check, I understand. And the issue I had was that while I was being called by public health, public health were trying to call me at the same time from another operative. I mean, on, on, my, on my guys, this is, this is getting to the point. Is this supposed to be, we're going back to the UK control um, and, and, and what, is the UK, what is the conservative government at the and moment? They seem to be running on an algorithm because they, they were yeah. calling my wife about half an hour to an hour earlier every single day. Yeah, me too. Really? Yes, <laughs> so there you are, just, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and that's, that's when you're going to get your call. And it was roughly around the same time, but it was earlier. So it started at midday and then became. But if we go back to the back to the conversation that we're having, if we if we look at where we are now, we we are obviously doing everything. Uh, we were, we're COVID compliant, obviously, um, but we're looking at these tables outside this this coffee bar. And this is a very modest coffee bar. There's maybe seven eight tables outside, nearly all full. Everybody wants to be socializing, even social distance, but they want to be outside. They want to have their cup of coffee. They want to integrate in society. They don't want to be stuck at home um, in, you know, uh, in their four walls. Because human, humans are social animals. Yeah, That's the absolutely. point. 
In fact, most animals are social because nature worked out that that's the best way of surviving and passing your genes to the next generation. So we're hardwired to be social. We're not wired to sit at home working from, an, from our, our, our desktops. Um, we're not wired to walk around wearing masks. That's why we have so many facial masks for facial expression. Um, and it is a catastrophe of the worst kind, both mental and physical, for people's health. Um, when, when, so when you look at sort of um, Maslow's pyramid of um, hierarchy of needs, yeah, yeah. and they talk about at the, at the bottom, you talk about shelter, food, and, and all those sort of things the essentials, as yeah. being the, the essentials. Um, I, I think sort of many neuroscientists have also put um community and contact at the bottom as well because um as a uh, as as the most essential one of the most essential needs because if a baby is born and doesn't connect with the mother then it's going to die if uh, if if uh, if uh, uh, you know if you look at like a i think some of the i think they use an example of some of the tribes in africa if someone has to go out on their own he's not going to be able to survive on his own he needs the connection and the community and the group to be able to survive and, right. and, and and the same and the same is here you know when when it's, it's probably the communication and contact is one of, is the most the essential human need that we actually have and if we go them. on the essential human need from my point of view and what i do for a living there i would be interested to find out globally let's say in europe the effect of not being able to meet face to face how that affects getting new business, not current business. Current business, you can have a key account manager having a Zoom call and saying, how are you doing? Here are your stats. Here's an update of where we are quarter three or whatever it may be. What is the effect going to be on actually getting new business? Because I'm sorry, I don't care who you are, how technology advanced you are. Business is still done face-to-face. -face. People will buy from people based on a relation, making a relationship and liking and trusting that person. How is that going to have effect? on the economy, on the world economy. And I, I think it will. It will, but I think, you know, where it needs must. And so, you know, business will find a way. Um, but, but apart from that, you're absolutely right. You know, people do need to meet face to face. Yeah, but they're, they're, go, they're going, I mean, even companies now, they're actually going down towards a more hybrid work structure where you'll only have to go into the office one or two days a week or um, if, if that, and then you're probably going to be working from, from home or even from some office space um, close to your home to be able to do that because that way companies don't have to pay the high costs of offices and things like this. And when you actually got place of people like living in the um, home counties, for example, or even further away, traveling into London, even the cost of um, trains is actually looking to increase quite significantly to cover the loss that they actually had over mm -hmm. the um, over the coronavirus. Okay, the bearing in mind that the subsidizing that, yeah, and bearing in mind that the service was appalling was appalling before, um, and so the cost of getting. In fact, actually, it's actually cheaper to actually get a. A, 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 a low cost flight to the Czech Republic than it is to go up to Birmingham yeah. or Manchester or something like this by train. Isn't well, it? That's shocking, isn't it? Well, the point is the government, the UK government at the moment, I, 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 up north, they've just bought back two of the, um, of the uh, private uh, train uh, uh, providers because they couldn't make any money and they had to temporarily take over the, the contract, which it, go, it goes back to the argument of you should have basic infrastructure for the people subsidized at such a low price so that people can commute can go to work can afford to go to work but at the moment with the current restrictions there is a big contradiction because mr richie sunak who i've actually got a lot of time for i think as a chancellor uh, somebody who's reacted really quickly with the furlough schemes and other schemes i think he's done really really well his stock in terms of personal stock i think he's done well considering however i think he made a bit of a Bit of a mistake in what he said recently. He's actually been trying to promote people to go back to their offices, when at the same time you've got very well-known companies like Google saying, "Actually, we've learned from this this lesson," and Amazon as well. 
actually, you know, you can stay at home and you don't have to be in the office very much. We can use technology. It's actually it's opened our eyes. We yeah, but use... the trouble is they, their technology is all run by a load of bright shifted Asperger's people. So it's their own technology. It's their platform. But, but, but also for an economy to grow, you also need people to spend. And whether it was actually traveling into offices and things like this, it does actually circulate more money around the economy as well. Yeah, um, but I know why he's doing it. But again, the why is not in question. The, the what's in question, or, or, or why is he saying that? Because actually things have changed. You, We will not go back to as it was pre-pandemic. There well, will that, be that, is that is the why. That is the why. That is the why. So the, is the, econ the economy can somewhat sort of reach some level. I mean, I think it's all going to change going forward. You know, we but... say this, Andy, we say this, but if you have a look mm. right now, the traffic levels have gone back to pretty they much have. normal. Everyone is going into their offices. Mm. Um, I mean, yes, there's, there's a lot more people working from home, but the offices are filling up nicely. Um, and I think, you know, it will go back to pretty much where it needs to be. People want their lives back. Because that's what yeah. humans do. Yeah, yeah. And, I agree with and there are so many studies that show that for physical and mental health, um, whether it's the Harvard Happiness Study, the Sardinia Longevity Study, the, uh, the Rosetta. Uh, okay, yeah, I get the um, point. Yeah, or, and then uh, all, the, all that little uh, study in South Africa with... Uh, with uh, old women trained in empathic listening, increasing people's mental health. The, it, we need direct human interaction and it is an abuse of power. It is, it is medically negligent, it is criminal. It is an abuse of human rights and liberties. I think once the right lawyers get stuck into this, uh, they're going to have a field day. And the only thing stopping it is, uh, is if uh, literally the, the government hire stooges to to uh, suppress and assassinate the right people. Otherwise, this will blow up in their faces. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. But, uh, you know. OK, guys, I think we've, you, uh, we're we coming up to the end of our time. Thanks very much for Thank listening. Much. If you've got any comments, please get in touch. Thank um, you. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Have Thank a great day. Thank Have you. a great day. Bye-bye.